So here we're looking at a lateral view of a plastic brain model. So just to recap from previous classes, we've got posterior aspect here, superior, and then oh, anterior here, and we've lost the cerebellum. Um, but what we're interested in today is if we have a look from an inferior point of view, what we're looking for are the pairs of cranial nerves. So here on the inferior aspect of the frontal lobe, we've got the olfactory nerves, right and left. Just behind them, we have the optic nerves. Now that's just what's left of them. Of course, they'd be quite a bit longer and heading to the back of the eyeball if the whole thing was there. Then if we just tilt so we've got a slightly more anterior point of view, we can see the third pair of cranial nerves here, the ocular motor nerves. Now they're in here coming from the uh, midbrain or kind of in between the midbrain and the pons there, but they're on the anterior aspect. Now the fourth pair of nerves, in order to see them, the trochlear nerves, we actually have to remove quite a, a few of the structures here of this 15 part brain model because the trochlear nerve is most easily visible from a posterior point of view. Now on some models you can see it coming around the side of the brain stem. On this one we can just see it here. So here it is posteriorly just coming around the side of the brain stem there. So again like the ocular motor nerve it's emerging at the junction of the pons and the midbrain, but it's posterior. Now it's a very fine nerve and often on specimens it's so small that you can't really see it. So we can zoom in, now that we've lost a few structures there, we can zoom in and have a slightly closer uh, look here. So we've got olfactory, optic, oculomotor, and then trochlear. And it's not a bad idea when you're practicing um, or when you're trying to learn these to do them in groups of four like that because four is not terribly overwhelming. And so you can just go olfactory, optic, ocular, motor, trochlear till you get them down pat and then move on to the next four and then move back to the first four that you did. Now the next group of four, if we look at a, a kind of lateral, anterolateral view here of the pons, the next one, nerve number five, is the trigeminal. And here it is on the lateral aspect of the pons. It's quite large and, and a bit hard to miss. Unfortunately, this one's lost a little bit of its white paint, but that's the trigeminal nerve there. From there, we move to a more inferior and medial position. And the next three we're looking at are going to be here. So six, seven, and eight are here. And they're emerging from the junction between the medulla and the pons. So here we've got the pons. Here we have the medulla oblongata. There's a junction here. These three are emerging from there. So the sixth pair are the abducent nerves. And then we have facial lateral to that and then vestibular cochlear lateral to that. So the second set of four, so five, six, seven, and eight, are trigeminal, abducent, facial, and vestibular cochlear. Now just one trick to warn you about with these two nerves here, on some models, they separate the vestibular cochlear nerve into its two parts, the vestibular nerve and the cochlear nerve. So let's just have a quick look at, at a model that actually does that. So here we've got a different brain model, and here we're looking at that same kind of uh, inferior view. And here we can see trigeminal, abducent, facial, and then for vestibular cochlear on this side, there are two structures there. So don't be fooled by that. If you see that on one of the models, all they're getting at is that there are two parts to the vestibular cochlear nerve, okay? So both of these parts here, the two more lateral ones are vestibular cochlear, but this one, the more medial one, will always be facial. So trigeminal, abducent, facial, and then both of these are vestibular cochlear. And notice that they didn't get carried away on this side. So on this side, it's similar to the other model we were looking at, where we just have trigeminal, abducent, facial, and then vestibular cochlear on this side is just one uh, structure there. So that's just something to look out for. Now then, back to the, one, the model we had before, the last four, so 9, 10, 11, and 12, the, this structure here is called the olive. You don't have to identify that one, but that's the olive, and it's on the lateral side of the proximal medulla oblongata. 
and the last four cranial nerves are all around the olive. So it's starting on the superior aspect here of the lateral medulla, uh, cranial nerve number nine here is the glossopharyngeal. Now it looks like a little comb. There's kind of like four little teeth there joining up to one uh, segment there, uh, becoming one. That's because these three nerves here all do that. They're all kind of a collection of tiny little hair-like fibres that join to form one nerve. So this is the glossopharyngeal nerve here, posterior to the olive. Then this next one, number 10, is the vagus. And again, looks like a little comb. There's a few of them there joining to form one nerve. So that's the vagus. This little line running along the medulla oblongata here is the accessory nerve. And then this larger looking one that's in front of the olive here, closer to the midline, that's the hypoglossal nerve. So it goes glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, hypoglossal in front of the olive. So just to recap, olfactory, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducent, facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and then hypoglossal.